Hello and welcome back to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott, and in today's episode of The Beginner's Course, we'll be making the monster. You may have already had a go at this, you might want to try my methods just for practicing and learning some new techniques. Some people have mentioned that they couldn't see the monster particularly well, so here's a better render. So if you haven't had a chance already, have a look at this and think about how you might go about creating it. I'm now going to talk through how I made it, and I'm going to explain how to use the mirror modifier. So there's a couple of ways to go about making this monster, and there's definitely some shortcuts. The way I've done it, if I select on my monster, I've done it as all one object, apart from the eyes at the front. Now that's probably an overly complicated way of doing it, and I'm going to show you what I think is the most easy way and efficient way. So I'll start a new scene, and I'll just explain how I made it. You can follow along if you'd like. Now remember front view is the x-axis going across, and I'll just grab my box and move it in the x-axis over to one side. And that can be its feet, and I can duplicate this with Shift D, and grab in the z-axis, just press Z once you've pressed Shift D, and then around there, scale it in, and that's its sort of forearm. So I can go along modeling like this, so Shift D, and then grab in the z-axis, I rotate it around the x, and then scale it down, somewhere around there, and scale, if I press Z twice, it goes to its local axis. Because I've rotated it, let's look at the item menu over here. If these don't appear, then press N on your keyboard, and that will get these items up. And you can see it's got a rotation, therefore its local axis is still the Z axis here. So this is kind of its upper arm. If I press G, then Y, then Y, it will move along that local axis. So double-clicking the axis letter, G, X, and X, will keep to the local axis. But if I just press G, then Y once, it will keep to the global coordinates, which you can see on your screen. You've also got this icon up here, which has global and local. Don't worry about the other ones at the moment. So I could just click on local, then I don't have to double-click. I can press G, then Y, it keeps to its local coordinates. I'm going to switch this back to global now. Okay, now the problem with modeling like this is that I have to select all these and shift D in the X axis and duplicate them all across to the other side. It's not that slow and it is a way of doing it, but there's a more efficient way of using a mirror modifier. So let's talk about the mirror modifier a touch. First of all, I'll create the body. So I'm going to press shift A and create a new cube right in the center. Now that's important that I've added it in the center because its pivot point is right in the center of the grid. That will make more sense in a second. Let's scale it up and grab it in the Z axis. Come around to the side and we'll rotate it in the X to somewhere around there. Now I'm going to take a moment to explain the mirror tool. So let's go into edit mode first. Tab into edit mode. And if I mirror this object now, it will mirror around the center point or the pivot point as it's known and it will create a whole new cube because we have a whole cube here. Now that's difficult to explain but I'll go to the mirror modifier. So modifiers are under the spanner or the wrench if you're American. Click on add modifier and we have a mirror modifier there. Now as I've said it's just created a whole new cube because it's mirroring the whole thing along the x-axis. So if I press G now that will grab all my vertices because I have vertices selected pull them out and you can see that other cube and it's being mirrored around the pivot point in the middle. So what we actually want to do, we want to cut the cube in half so that we've got a mirrored half. So I'm going to do that over here. So control R and double left click and cut it in half. And I want to delete this side so that when they join back together, we can be modeling on one side and it will update on the other. So I'll go to face mode for this with three on my numpad or you can select faces up here select these faces, move around a touch to get them all, delete faces. Can you see how that updated on the other side? Now if I select all with A, it's only selecting one side because this is just a duplicate. Let's grab that in the x-axis and pull them together. And I want it somewhere around there, but can you notice how they're overlapping each other? I don't want that to happen, I want them to actually sort of stick together or clip together. So there's clipping over here, and now when I press G then X, it squeezes together. And then if I left click now and press G to grab in the X, they actually stay together. 
I'm going to do that once more because it can get confusing the mirror modifier. So G to grab and then they clip together but I'm pulling it away again. It doesn't stick until I squeeze them together and then left click. And now when I grab again, they are stuck together. Okay, so that's nice. We've got a mirror modifier on and I can then edit this shape if I want. Let's say add a loop cut. So just there with control R for loop cut or you can use the tool over here. Control R and then I can move it along with left click once I've left clicked and then left click to assign it. Let's get this edge here. If I press G twice, double G, I can edge slide like this, so slide down that edge and I can have a body like this. It's still very square and blocky, but that's kind of the fun of it. Now it's hugely wide at the moment, so I might need to bring these in. So let's come out of edit mode with tab and think about these three objects. Now I can, like I said, duplicate them across the other side, or we could use the mirror modifier. So let's select the top one first and try and mirror this. So under my modifiers with the spanner or wrench, go to add modifier mirror. Okay, now why is it not appearing on the other side? Have a quick think. It's because my pivot point is in the center. So it's mirroring itself in the center. If I press G now, it's moving the pivot point because I'm in object mode. So I'll right click to cancel that. I need that pivot point in the center here, or if I go to front view with one on my numpad, anywhere down this line, and it will mirror across if I have the X axis selected. So I've got to somehow move my pivot point to this line here. Well, my 3D cursor is in the middle at the moment. So if I were to tell my pivot point to move to my 3D cursor, that would mirror across to the other side. Let's quickly do that. So under object this time, there's set origin. And origin to 3D cursor will move it to the middle. And there I have my mirrored object on the other side. So let's do again with the other one. But this time my 3D cursor is not going to be in the middle. So shift right click to move my 3D cursor and I want to move my pivot point into the center again. There's a simple way, shift S brings up this nice menu here and we have cursor to world origin. There's all sorts of other options as well which can be really handy, but cursor to world origin is the most commonly used. And then we can go up to object, set origin, origin to 3D cursor and then add our mirror modifier. So in the modifier panel, mirror, and there it is on the other side. So I'll quickly do the same for the last one. And there we go. Now, if I want to update anything on this side, let's say go into edit mode and grab this face and pull it forward. So he's got some weird looking feet. It copies it over to the other side. Now there's one other thing I want to mention. Let's go back into object mode and there's apply over here. If I press apply, it now means that I can go into this object, this side, and just affect this half on its own, and it's not updating on the other side. So if any point you want to apply your mirror and make changes to the other side of your object, then you can apply it over here. But I'll undo those steps. Generally, you might as well keep it on if it's a symmetrical object so that it always updates on the other side. So you don't need to click apply. So if I'm making the shoulder, for example, I can press Shift D now in object mode and bring this up to the top here. I've got my other half working as well. And now you can see there's some sort of issue. It's moved across the other side. So have a think why that's happening. Let's go to front view. That might give you a hint. Can you see my pivot point is now off center? It's because I grabbed it in object mode. So to put it back, I can easily undo or I can get the location of the X just here and change that to zero. Now I know that the pivot point is right in the center along the X axis. What I need to do if I don't want to move the pivot point is go into edit mode and select all my mesh and grab it and move it around. Select all my mesh with A and grab it and move it around. So then it keeps its mirror and it keeps its symmetry. Let's scale that up a bit, somewhere around there. Do a loop cut in the middle here, control R and I've got my loop cut tool, left click and left click again to set it. And then I can move this edge because I'm in edge mode, G to grab along the X axis. And then I've got a sort of shoulder. Now I rotated mine, so select all with A. So I'm selecting all the edges into side view with three on the numpad. Can you see my edited shape is on the other side? You can press control three 
to change the side that it goes to. So three is looking from the right hand side, control three is looking from the left hand side and that helps in this case. So I've selected all with A, rotate and there we've got some shoulders now. So hopefully from there you can see how you can build up a character with the mirror modifier being used. Remember, if you're in object mode, you will move the pivot point. So if you're making any edits, like moving your shape, select all the vertices, faces or edges and move them around that way. Don't go back into object mode. You only need to go into object mode when you want to change to a different object. You do actually have a function in 2.8, which is new, that you can select several objects and go into edit mode with those several objects. There's no particular reason to do that at the moment, but you could move a whole section at the same time. So if I press A now to select all, G and the X axis, I can move these in together. And that's really handy. So selecting multiple objects in object mode, first of all, then go into edit mode and you can edit them at the same time. So your challenge now is to make that monster. If you've already made him without the mirror, then I suggest just having a quick go at making a few shapes with the mirror to understand how it works. So let's look back at mine. I think this is actually modeled in a slightly inefficient way because I linked all my objects together. So I actually, whilst I was in edit mode, I was adding new objects. So shift and add a cube. And then it's actually linked to the original object, as you can see here. And I think that's possibly an inefficient way to do it. And I think the way I just explained is probably a bit better. In terms of building up the legs, just have a reference image to think how a dog's legs go, if, if you want your monster to look like a dog, that is. And just a quick look at these different shapes around here. If I go into edit mode, you can see how they've been created. So let's go back into object mode. Lastly, there's the street which is fairly straightforward. There's just a big cube there and the pavement there. The lamp poster are a little bit tougher. If I press full stop on my numpad, I'll zoom into that. And if I go to edit mode, you can see the shape. I separated them there so I could separate this texture out. If I go to textured mode at the moment, Z will get you this radial menu for going to your rendered modes, or you can obviously go up here and I'm going to choose render and you can see that I changed the texture of that particular face so I needed a face in there so I've added that loop cut around there so I'll very quickly make that shift right click here in object mode shift a mesh cube scale it down just a touch into edit mode into face mode up here or you can press 3 on your keyboard grab this put it up in the Z axis G then Z, E to extrude, that's the extrusion tool, so we're making new topology to around there, scale it down, E to extrude, pull it up to somewhere around here, oh, not there, that's miles away, G then Z, full stop on my numpad to zoom in on that, E to extrude again in the Z axis, so E then Z, this face now, E then X, and pull that out to there, and there's a loop cut in there, so if I show you that, there's a loop cut in there so I could separate this face. So let's go back to this one, Control R, loop cut, and drag it back this time, just by left click and then moving your mouse, and left click again to apply that. And there's the lamp post. So now you should have enough information to create the whole scene. In the next episode, we'll be going through the lighting and creating the foggy atmosphere. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.